This is David Gilmore known as LDS Prepper and today we're talking about how to easily and affordably mount antennas for your family emergency radio communications net. Having an external antenna on a, even a little 5 watt handheld radio makes all the difference in the world. In addition to this video I have over 600 videos on emergency preparedness so we all can get prepared for what's coming down the pipe including water filtration and purification how to grow food as if your life depends on it, off-grid power, using herbs, and many other items on preparedness. To watch those videos for free, go to LDSPrepper.com. I've had multiple people comment on my videos that I put up about emergency preparedness radio communications networks for families, neighborhoods, churches, and so forth. And they love the videos, but they, the question is, how do I set up an antenna? Well, here I'm at my house, and you can see my antenna goes all the way up to there. And this is not necessarily the tallest antenna in the neighborhood. Matter of fact, it isn't for sure. But what I've done is a very affordable and easy way for me to set this up. I, I didn't want to buy an expensive official ham radio station antenna tower, which costs hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Just didn't think that was what I wanted to do. And I, I just I want to get the best return on my investment. So I have this chimney here, and uh, underneath this chimney is where my eaves are. So I thought, well, this couldn't be much easier to set this up. So the, I got two sections of top rail for chain link fence going from here all the way up to there. That's 20 feet. And then the connections to connect the antenna onto that came with the antenna. And I just at attached it. So it's way up there. It's 30 feet in the air because it's 20 feet uh, of poles and it's 10 feet off the ground. I bought a chimney mount and I'll have a link to that down below as well for all the other items I mentioned in this uh, video. And it just wraps around my chimney. Now I also bought some corner pieces, some metal corner pieces to give it some structural strength so I just wasn't pinching center block. I wanted to give it some extra strength so that I did that. But, and some zip ties and that's it. I'm, I'm all set up. In addition to the guy wires, you can see four guy wires coming off. Uh, because when I'm that far up in the air and we get 66 mile an hour winds, I uh, wanted to make sure I had some guy wires. So I got guy wires coming down here and I put them as far apart as possible. There's one over there and one right here, one over here. And then I used to have another one that would come down into this corner you can see the bolt right there I have, but that was too close. It wasn't giving me the strength I wanted, so I, I changed that guy wire, and that guy wire comes all the way over here now and attaches to my solar panels. And so that gives me a really nice broad base to stabilize that very high antenna. It's very affordable to do this. I bought all these items here locally, and I don't like cutting things. So this is the extra uh, unused cable that I have here. And I'll have a link to this cable also. Just tied this up. I've got my clamps here to hold it in place. And it's just been doing really, really well. So that's how I have mine set up at my house. Let's take a look at how I set up Kelly's antenna and how Rick set up his. Here I'm over at Kelly's house and we've got her antenna set up. Pretty much how I set up a lot of these antennas. And this is for her GMRS radio. And what I have here, if we have, as you can see, a vent pipe coming out of the roof. That's for letting air pressure out of the water system. I have a short length, probably a four or five foot piece of scrap PVC bolted to that vent pipe. I really hate drilling holes into eaves and so forth. And fortunate for us, right over here, is a roof vent and in that roof vent is right over her kitchen where we have the radio set up. So I just went and bought a grommet, drilled a hole, put the cable through the hole with the grommet in it and drilled the hole down through her ceiling and would fit perfectly into her kitchen. So that's a very easy setup, very inexpensive, just a couple bolts and nuts or you could use hose clamps to do the same thing. The mounting hardware for the antenna actually came with it. That you can see there screwed onto the white PVC pipe. 
and then we've got the cable just running in through the side of that ceiling vent. Very easy to do. All right, I'm over here at Rick's house and he just installed a 17 foot antenna. This is a dual band UHF and VHF antenna. And uh, he's got it pretty much hooked up as how I hook mine up, except for he's got a much stouter pole. Uh, he's got a six foot chain link fence vertical post. He's got three hose clamps going on to a four by four that is cemented into the ground. This puppy's not going anywhere. As far as weather protection, he's got his house protecting it coming from the west. And he's, you know, so I'm not worried about wind or anything like that. But this pole is not going anywhere. This antenna will do a great job. He's already tested it. He's able to hit a repeater 50 to 60 miles away. And uh, he will be running it first tonight. One thing that he's done here is he's um, put a loop on here. This is a drip loop. So that when the water drips down, it, it uh, drips out there instead of going uh, all the way down the cable. His ham shack is down in the basement, so he's just got coax cable going through a window, and he's down there with his hand held. He should be able to do great. So he's already hit 50 to 60 miles away in a handheld with his antenna, whereas before he was lucky to get five miles. Not even, not even, miles. Not even that. Okay, so good job, Rick. So I hope those three examples of how to set up antennas is helpful for you. You don't need to spend a lot of money to do this. Just need to make sure the antenna is secure. Uh, you notice that Rick said he had the water, uh, the, the cable in a loop for a drip, and underneath my eave, I had it come down and go up inside the eave to, for the water to drip out. But other than that, it's pretty straightforward. I would recommend that you seal any joints that you may have on your antenna. I had sections, I had three sections on my antenna because it's 17 feet tall, and I would uh, wrap that with self sticking tape, self-adhesive tape. Uh, I'll have a link to that. I don't know exactly what it's called, but that keeps the water out. I've helped other people do this and everyone who's wrapped it with that tape for those joints has had no problems. The one person who didn't do that, literally the pipes filled up with water, even though there's gaskets and so forth in it. Wrap it with the uh, tape. If you have three sections, if you have just one section in your uh, antenna, then uh, you don't need that. Again, I have several videos on preparedness. I have uh, the best family emergency radio on the planet video. I've got the best way to buy that. I show how we how we use that in a family situation. Literally set up. It's working with a, a mother and two daughters. I've got a lot of details in other videos. Those links will be below this video. So make sure you take a look at those videos there. To find out which is my recommendation for the best family radio for emergency communication. So when the grid goes down, when the cell towers aren't working, you can still be in touch with your loved ones. This is LDS Prepper reminding you, if you are prepared and have your communications set up, tested, and working, you shall not fear.